a two time champion today as we build up to the big event to Crick Buzz Live in association with our fantasy partner My Eleven Circle and a team that I've always enjoyed watching but which has endured a slightly frustrating run over the last two tournaments especially for their fans heartbreakingly so going out of all things on net run rate and finishing fifth both in 2019 and 2020. Why did that happen? Well, a couple of cricketing reasons. They weren't scoring enough runs in the power play and they weren't taking enough wickets in the power play and so they were always on the back foot starting. Then a bit of a churn in 2020. Dinesh Karthik having to give up the captaincy midstream for personal reasons. Owen Morgan then coming in, trying to get a feel of what was happening. But more than anything else, that big cloud around Andre Russell, their, their talisman player, and that meant that the structure and the balance of the team was constantly changing. What can they look forward to in 2021? Well, for a start, they've got to address all those issues and then overcome a few other problems. I mean, uh, Kuldeep Yadav's form is concerned. Sunil Narayan hasn't played for a while. Uh, Andre Russell's fitness is going to be a big factor. Uh, Owen Morgan is not in great form. There's, there's some of these little factors, but I think there's far too much pedigree in this side for those to be big issues. So let, let's look at the side then, and you'll find not too much change. From, uh, from 2020. A bit like Hyderabad, a bit like Chennai, like Mumbai, the teams that do well don't make wholesale changes to their side. Let's see who Kolkata have let go. They've let go Banton, they've let go Green, Lard, Naik and Siddharth, few in India players, not any of those, not players who were affecting the balance of the side. Who have they got in? Now here's something interesting. Sheldon Jackson has been with them in the past. Uh, maybe as a backup for, uh, for, for Dinesh Karthik. Uh, Harbhajan Singh, in case they're playing on slowish tracks, maybe a little bit of experience there, but I don't see him playing a major role. A backup for Andre Russell is very important given his, uh, given his fitness issues, and that means Ben Cutting is not a bad choice. And I think the choice that could make a huge impact on this year's tournament, given, the, given that there's a little bit of unpredictability now around Sunil Narayan, and that is the arrival of Shakib al Hassan. Okay, so let's see how these arrivals can affect the two big problems that they had. If Andre Russell is fit and firing, and that's always a big part of Kolkata, then Pat Cummins can give you more at the start. You saw in 2020 as the season went along that Pat Cummins kept growing. And if we can have the Cummins of the second half of the tournament ready firing, he can give you three overs right at the top. It takes away a little bit of the inexperience of Mavi. They want Prasid Krishna who's in good form to deliver as well. But Russell can give you two overs at the death. That makes a big difference. They want that to happen. But the big issue is the runs in the power play. See, there was too much churn over there. Shubman Gill is there, but Shubman Gill is not going to give you 150 starts. So they need someone alongside Shubman Gill. They tried a few players last year, but I think in Nitish Rana, they've got the player to accompany Shubman Gill. They can give Nitish Rana the freedom to go at the start, but that means three and four have to do well too. Now, ideally, you want Owen Morgan at four, Dinesh Karthik at five, Andre Russell at six. We've been talking about that for a while now. That's fantastic. One of the problems last year was if you're losing two wickets too early, do you want each of these three who are much better at the tail end coming in early? And that is why I think the arrival of Karun Nair, who I didn't mention at the start, could be a big factor. Karun Nair at four. So this is how I see KKR's team forming. Uh, Nitish Rana as a, counter, as a counterfoil to the solidity of Shuman Gill. Then I see Shakib ul Hassan batting at three. That's going to be the big debate for Kolkata this year. Shakib ul Hassan, Sunil Narayan. Shakib ul Hassan, Sunil Narayan. What can one give to the other? Sunil Narayan, largely bowler who was giving you a flyer at the start. But look at Narayan's numbers in recent times. Since 2019, he's been going at 7.88 economy and a strike rate of 32. That means most games, Sunil Narayan is 4-0-31-0 or thereabouts. What's he doing with the bat? He's scoring at 150, but he's only scoring 15 or thereabouts. That means he's not giving you too many runs. Of the runs he scored last year, a vast majority only came in one innings that he came good at when he was a floater. He made a 60 in that innings. What does Shakib ul Hassan give you? He gives you a pedigree three that allows the explosive 4-5-6, the right slot in the batting order. And if you're looking at 4-0, 31-0, I think Shakib's giving you that as well. And I think Shakib Lawson at number three 
where he had a fantastic World Cup of 2019, could revolutionize this side's batting with a left-hander at the top. It might mean left, too many left-handers at the top, but DKO and Morgan can intersperse with each other and then Russell down at six. And I think that top six is as good as any in, in the tournament. What about number seven? Every year, because of the presence of Dinesh Karthik, Sunil Narayan and Andre Russell, they always play a floater. That floater has been Rahul Tripathi. They can play Rahul Tripathi as a floater again. But I think Karun Nair is better suited to play that role as the kind of role Badrinath used to play for Chennai. I used to call him the umbrella man. Every time there's a bit of rain and uncertainty at the top, Badrinath would come in and settle things at four. If they got off to a great start, they didn't even need Badrinath to bat. And I think Karun Nair could play that role this year for Kolkata. So here is the 11 that I believe can deliver a playoffs berth for Kolkata. And it's, it's a team that will work in a 150 situation and a 170, 180 situation as well. I will open with the dash of Nitish Rana and the solidity of Shubman Gill, the flair of Shakib Al Hassan at number three. Then Karun Nair, maybe at four, maybe at seven, maybe not at all if the top three do really well. Then Dinesh Karthik, Owen Morgan and Andre Russell with Pat Cummins to follow. That's a really solid middle order, capable of delivering explosive finishes. And then thereafter, you've got uh, Prasid Krishna, you've got Shivam Mavi and you've got Varun Chakravarti. The first three games are on slowish tracks. If they do discover that it's a really slow track, they want extra spin bowling options. Maybe they could leave out a Mavi or a Nagarkoti or a Warrior. One of them would be playing as the extra seamer and maybe play either a, a Pavan Negi or a, or a Harbhajan. Remember, they've got five bowlers already. So even if they get two, three overs from these people, that is fine. So I believe this is a team that can address the issues that they had of not scoring enough runs in the power play. If Cummins is going hard at the top, Prasid Krishna is in form, Russell bolts an over, maybe they can address the power play issues there as well. And I think here is a team that once it's put together, would be very hard to, uh, to stop from getting into the playoffs. Which leaves us with that little X-Factor player. I've been a fan of Shakib over the years. Some of you have complained about it as well. Some of you have liked it. But I do think that to this side, he brings such a lot. I think he could well be the X-Factor for Kolkata this year.